Hey friends, welcome to this training to go from overwhelmed to CRM ease. For this training, I'm using my The CRM Workbook. If you already have the workbook, amazing. If you don't have the workbook and you want to get it, you can go to www.jillianwalker.com forward slash The CRM Workbook. So let's get started. Let's walk through the six steps in my proven framework to start setting up and maintaining your 17 hats or Dubsado account. So the first step is setting up all your foundations. These are really simple steps, things like adding your business contact in information, your logo, connecting to your email processor, your payment processor, all of these things that need to be there before you can actually start using your system. But they're not really complex and we'll dive into those a bit more later on. The next step is to assess and learn. So this is actually taking time to learn how your platform works, all of the different features that are available and what kind of workflows you need to support your business. The third step is the planning phase. So this is making sure that we are planning out all of the steps within workflows using our knowledge that we've gained in the learning process. The next step is putting together all of the communications that you're going to need. So those are things like email templates, forms, um, schedulers, those sorts of things. Then how are you going to build it out? It's time to build it out into your system. And once everything's built, then you move into a maintenance time. I put in here some resources for you to get started. So some free support, some really helpful um, places for you to get some training and then we're jumping into the four key foundations so the first one is brand preferences this is things like adding your business contact information your brand colors your logo your preferred font the next step is to connect to your email provider and sync to your calendar then you're going to want to um, connect to your domain name. And then finally, you are going to make use of all of those third party integrations so that your system isn't a standalone solution and actually works with some of the other softwares and things that you're doing in your business. It's really helpful at this stage to think about all of the different places where your leads come from. So whether that's social media, referrals, Google, lists out all of those different places. And that'll be useful whenever you're setting up your lead sources in Dubsado, or you can, in 17 Hats, they don't have lead sources just yet. So you can use things like um, tags. List out all of the different integrations that you have and check sometimes there's a direct integration within your platform other times you'll need Zapier just to connect the two pieces of software together so if you want to use your CRM workbook to add all of your login details below so that you have them easily to hand whenever you go to do that you can you can use the space below so next we move on to the foundations checklist this is just making sure that you have gone through all of these steps and the wonderful thing about these steps is that they are pretty much set and forget because unless you're going to change who you're taking payments with so maybe you were using square and you want to start using stripe then you would need to change that but other than that most of this stuff you do it once and you're done which is wonderful for us business owners and this whole process shouldn't take you long if you've got the do-it-yourself calculator then you can work out exactly how long all these steps will take you but it's not um, a really time consuming process it's something that you can get through fairly quickly moving into the assess and learn phase of the framework we need to think about what workflows we're actually going to need in order to support us as business owners and also create a wonderful client experience. So typically we need workflows for the sales process. So for that initial lead process, and maybe um, for some sales processes with existing customers that you have. 
You also need workflows to help you with delivering your services. And I have clients that use workflows for scaling. So things like um, booking, marketing, podcasts and things like that. So how can you use um, different workflows in your business to cover your sales process, your services and scaling? I've created space here for you to list out and brainstorm some of this stuff. When it comes to the sales process, you need to think about on your quotation, are your services quoted individually? So that you'll need a workflow for each or can the client select one workflow for whatever they purchase? If you're quoting individually, is the sales process the same for every client? But you determine what quote they need. And in the CRM workbook, there's space here for you to brainstorm all of these different steps. And then I just want you to make sure that you've covered your sales process, the delivery of all of your different services that you offer and any workflows that you might need for scaling. And scaling could be upselling as well. So anything that you, you want to offer additional services to clients or you want to help with your marketing process, anything that helps with um, bringing in new business, creating new revenue. To start planning your workflows, you'll need to consider how to incorporate these three powerful features. So if you want to use a client portal, how are you going to make that happen? Using a scheduler to make booking with clients really easy and what kind of forms that you're going to need. You also should consider whether you're going to embed onto your website or you're going to send clients to a URL to access their information. When it comes to the scheduler, do we want them to simply book an appointment with us or do we want them to pay for that appointment or complete um, a form before as part of the, the booking process for that appointment type? And what kind of forms do we need to truly collaborate with our clients and make the entire experience a wonderful one for them? The typical communications that you're going to need is a lead capture form, quotes, contracts, questionnaires, invoices and email templates. So those are the things that you're going to need to put together before you can actually start building workflows. If you're using 17 hats you can and you have access to life cycles, then you can actually have a visual for where your client is in your process and you can apply that visual to a project. So what are those different um, phases that your client will go through when working with you in a specific in a specific service that they have purchased from you? In Dubsado, we can have different statuses for leads and for jobs. We call these funnels in Dubsado. This is essentially how you like to organize your projects, whether they are a lead project or a booked paid client. How do you like to um, categorize these in order to be able to group projects together and find them easily? When building out workflows in 17 hats, we can actually create phases which breaks up the workflow so it doesn't look as long. So grouping your workflow steps into phases can be a really good visual technique. If your project has a lot of steps as rather than having one long confusing workflow, it can break it down into smaller phases that are more easy for you to understand. An important thing to note though is that you currently cannot move phases up or down. So this is why it's so important to list out your phases whenever you're building workflows or when you're actually planning your workflows so that you don't build it all out and then have to start all over again.
when it comes to email templates, there's five questions that you really need to ask yourself before you start composing your email template. The first is what smart fields or tokens can I insert into my template to pull client or project or even custom information into my emails automatically so that you so that emails feel personal but you don't have to keep rewriting them for every client that for every single client how can i make use of formatting my emails to make them stand out to be clear and easy to understand what information do i need to provide to my client within emails so things like setting boundaries or giving them information they need to know before an appointment, things like that. How do I write my client communications with keeping my own tone of voice? And is there anything that I need to include? So that could be links or sending attachments to documents. And using these questions to prompt you will help you to really think about and personalise those communications. Okay, so now that you know what workflows you need and you understand your system, what it's capable of and how features work, I want you to think about planning out your workflows. So you need to think about what is the very first step? What is the trigger that kicks off a workflow? Once you've identified that trigger, what happens next? How does this step happen? Can it happen automatically or do we need approval required? What communications go with this action all the way through until your final step. Once you are building out your workflows, if you feel overwhelmed at all, I want you to use the step back technique. So step one is to just recognize and acknowledge that you're feeling overwhelmed and take a step back, take a short break, get up from your desk, go get a cup of coffee or something and come back when you're ready. Then I want you to ask questions. So I want you to ask yourself, have I skipped steps in this workflow? Am I jumping too far ahead? Am I moving too quickly? Those are the things that I see all the time whenever I'm having um, workflow planning sessions. I see people skipping ahead or trying to go too far when we, we really haven't identified everything in terms of this one action just yet. Step three is to write, draw or talk however you prefer to do things about the steps of your workflow into little bite-sized pieces. So you can create a timeline and you can add your workflow steps, give each action. And if we look at this workflow creation template, this is essentially everything that you need. So you need to know what is the trigger? So what is the action? When does it happen? And is approval required? Then what's the next thing that happens? What's the next action? And you'll know what actions are available because you'll have spent time for example, in Dubsado, looking at the workflow builder and knowing that actions could be things like adding a tag, starting a workflow, sending the scheduler, sending an email template. So all of those different things, you need to understand those. And once you have that, what is the action? When does this happen? Does it happen straight away? Does it happen after seven days? What is the time frame? And or maybe it happens not in a time frame, but after a certain action has been completed. So for example, after a questionnaire has been completed, then the next action happens. So when does this thing happen? And is approval required? Do we need to have an approval on this step or does the step happen automatically? And you just keep going with that until you are through the entire process of your client journey and you've laid out all of the steps of your workflow. The workflows that I suggest that you have are a lead process workflow, a booking process workflow, so when they're actually signing up to work with you, once they have signed up to work with you, how are you going to deliver that service? Do you need multiple workflows for service delivery or is everything the same? How do you complete projects or end services with clients? And how do you upsell and follow up and keep that relationship going? And now that you have all of your workflow steps laid out, you need to just get all of your communications ready. So make sure that you have your lead capture form and all of the things that you need, the questions you need to ask on that. 
you have your quotes, contracts, questionnaires, invoice templates, email templates, gather everything together, write those out in your system. And then you're ready to move on to the build phase. Move on to the build phase. Just make sure to go through this planning checklist. So you've reviewed all of the features available and learned how they work. You've planned out your customer journey. You've identified the trigger that kicks off the workflow. You've listed all of the steps and assigned an action. You've determined when that action happens and if approval is required. You've broken your workflow down into stages. You've listed all of the communications that you need and you've planned the workflow communications and what needs to be included in each. So once you have your system built and optimized, you're obviously going to be testing as you're starting to use these workflows with clients. But once you have completed the testing phase, you go into a maintenance mode. So this is where you need to keep an eye on new features that are coming out um, so that you can see how you can use those in your processes to make streamline things, make things easier. You should schedule time in your calendar for reviewing your workflows for any changes or implementing those new features. And also, if, if things have changed in your business and you need to add a new workflow, then also include that in your review sessions. You should also make time for learning those new features when they come out. One of the most important and impactful things you can do is to educate yourself and learn every element of the system, whether that's new or old. Remember that there are support teams there to help you with any technical difficulties. Sometimes things do break and you just need to liaise with the support team and they can help you get back on track as, as fast as possible. And the last step is to just clean up. So if you're, using a work if you're no longer using a workflow, then get it out of your system because what I find is a lot of people have visual overwhelm. They just get overwhelmed by looking at the sheer amount of templates that they have and most of them aren't even used. So just keep your system as clean as possible. So remember, if you followed all of these steps, you've completed everything you need to do to set up and optimize your CRM. Now's the time to actually feel the benefit of using a fully set up and optimized CRM in your business. To thank you for watching this training session, I've put together an offer to help you fast track your CRM setup and optimization. You can only get this offer at the address below. Go to www.juliannewalker.com forward slash on demand. And if you haven't already, please join us in our free Facebook community, the Client Management Society. Thanks for watching.